I'm ready. Well, good, because this is the dork table on the second day of November 2019. What a coincidence. It's my dad's birthday. No, it isn't. Yeah, sure it is. Nah, we're going to revoke it. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he's dead, so mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess he's not really celebrating anymore. Ouch. I was only joking around, too, but I noticed the lack of t- uh, father talk over the years. So I've just ah. never really negotiated it and just assumed. You know what I mean? Anyway. Hey, Grimner, I'm a little bit late. I got caught up in this tie. I thought I had another hour, and it turns out I was five minutes late. But, uh, you know, that's life. Life in the big electronic city that we call RLM. RealLibertyMedia.com. Thanks, Grimner. And uh, you want to say hi to the bots and bodies? This week, I've been doing it in a rush, so nobody hears what I say. Ah, okay. I just blow through them and like, buddy, 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 like an action. Yeah, <laughs> shit, that's everybody now. Shut up, and sit down. No, say hi to the bunch. Shut up. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I clicked on the RLM and dang. Hmm. Cyborg Noodle shared some weirdness. In any case, right up top, I see Barman, the most fun different spot in the whole wide world, closely followed by. Beetle! Beetle! Hey, Beetle, how, hey, you, Beetle, doing? how you doing? I also see Grimner, the oh, RLM Grimner. god, and the lovely Moose Girl are also logged in. Moose and uh, we got Anti going on as well as the Asmodeus Asmo. Uh, Chalcedony is in the chat as well as Echelon. Yours truly. Uh, bless their hearts. Oh, Anti, that's a Q, not a. <laughs> <laughs> mm. hey, I got a close enough from the boss. Yes, you did. The hey, boss that of the imaginary You're in RLM world. Net, in, in RLM land, ish, <laughs> is really, really popular. <laughs> we're ish. <laughs> we're ish. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> where were you? Yeah, you uh, Where were I? Echelon. Oh, Echelon, yeah. Uh, me, I'm here. No, you not. Also I- well, okay. That on. is debatable. Uh, uh, let me tell you. Uh, uh, and I know about yeah. not being there. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, well, I'm not all there, but that's, you know, that's uh, It's different. good to have you back on the door table, Miss <laughs> Mary. You have no idea what I have put myself through. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, because it's your thing, not mm. mine. But in any case, yep. back yep. to saying, hey, Java, 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 Java Dr. Two. Dr. Two. Hey, yeah. I also see Meister Brown Woody. here, as well as Ponder mm-hmm. Gander. He's going to gander and ponder what he's gandering at. <laughs> no, he's going to tell <laughs> us what to ponder at and what to gander at. Oh, he's going to he's going to tell us what to gander at and then tell us how, how to, ponder to ponder it. it. Yeah, that, so there we were go. we were in the ballpark. Some okay. some form of control. I don't get it, Miss Mary. I thought he was you a know, dork. Apparently not. What well, you know, think? just because he wants to tell us how to ponder something doesn't mean we have to ponder it that way because, you know, we is each individual. And he won't see what you see or what I see because we're individuals. And he's trying to take that away from us in a way he doesn't see. That's all. Well, yeah, the, the, and that's, you know, that's his thing. The guy with the shotgun doesn't really think he's doing anything wrong. He's keeping order. Order, or, order up, please. I would like some fries. Oh, you okay. can't have no fries. Oh, no man. fries for you. I'm the fried man. Oh, no fries for you. Go ahead. Well, I'll just have a baked potato. Okay. Hi, Poopster. Poopster. <laughs> I also see Prince is here, not the purple one. The lovely Miss Kate is also Prince. here, as well as Mr. Rob Oikes. Are you all ha- settled in, Rob Oikes? No, he's still I'm working not. on it. Yeah, no. He, he's like us. It's going to take him forever. <laughs> he's got well, the rest well. of his life. Don't rush the poor fucker. Jeez. That's true. That's I mean, true. it was enough that he that he broke down and, and did what he did. So, you know, don't don't mess with him any more than we already have. <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> one small step for man, one giant leap for Rob Works. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also see Rome's is here, and Rome's has doggy trouble. Uh oh. Doggy trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people not tended to. You know, people, you need to understand that 
that not only do you have that dog, but that dog has you. You oh, guys yeah. take care of each other, and you're supposed to maintain. Big time. Yeah. Yes. I also see the lovely Miss Vanna White is here as well as Vin E. Got a weather Vinny. dork in the channel. Weather dork. What is my know. weather? I'm going to look at my weather right quick and mm. see what. Ooh, it's 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Are you outside in 37 degrees? No, wow. I'm inside. Then with stop complaining. <laughs> uh, and you're wearing your gay clothes, too. How cool. I'm, I'm wearing my flannel. Your yep. ACDC shirt. Hey, and it's got pink in it, so it can be ACDC. Well, yeah, can. yeah, there you go. Flannel. Who knew? I uh, know. I uh, know. <sighs> I also see Phantom. The Phantom is here. The Phantom. He's the Phantom the of the Phantom. RLM. Phantom. And CC66. I know, as well as Josh Scott. And then the lovely Miss Soiko. Hello, honey. Hello, honey. You got a cyborg noodle at Cyborgian Noodle. Is cyborg noodle. The dork cakes is here. Dork cakes. Hey, mental, you old bastard. How the hell are you? We also have E Man. E Man. E Man. He's e just an E Man. He's not a real man. Um, kind of like Pinocchio, only oh. not. Um, yeah. And Siv is also here, as well as you're here. Hey, you're worth, you're here too. I'm and here in got spirit. A, we got a frumpy work and a frumpy work and a frumpy. We got a trifecta of frump. Going I, on. Yeah, that's good because I'm wearing stretchy pants, so I guess that technically makes me frumpy too. <laughs> oh, jeez, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Visualize that in the RLM people. <laughs> yeah. Sapa with my off the fashion train <laughs> notifications. Like yeah. you really, really wanted to know, but I'm gonna tell mm. you anyway. Mm. Uh let's see. Grandma, JJ's no no nine, that Scottish feller. Jay's Keep the nice, guilt truck down, dude, because it's birdsy out there. You don't want to freeze your balls off. Nah, keep them dangly bits. Maybe warm. you do, I don't know. Those Scott people are kinda weird. No, that's those trans people that do that shit. Oh, Scott, oh. trans. I was close. I only missed it by uh, a few levels. Oh, ooh, ee, ah, I bet JJ's would take umbrage <laughs> with that. <laughs> I, I know he would. <laughs> <laughs> he I also know. see kisses in the chat, as well as the real Donnie Wu. Not the Memorex one, the real one. We also got a sock puppet. Sock puppet. Is in here. And Slim Jim Flim. Mm. I saw a little bit of a Slim Jim Flim thing last night, and oh I went, boy. no, just walk away. Just walk <laughs> away. <laughs> no, but he's a good end. He's an entertaining writer. Well, I yeah, call that you know, creative writing on RLM. Life is full of entertainment, and some people who are just overachievers. <laughs> or good writers. Oh, hell yeah. Mm. Oh, Spanx. Someone's got Spanx. Slim Jim, you're wearing Spanx? Uh -oh. oh, that's something I didn't want to know. Maybe I also see Mataz is in the chat, as well as the holiest Roger ever. Mm -hmm. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the z -Picks. So, Wow, z -Picks. Z Bada boom, 12 yeah. minutes. Okay, it's there. 12 minutes. Well, no, because yeah. we started late. Yeah, but that's okay. I won't tell if you won't. We started ish. Well... I've got some really individual ideas, apparently. I spoke with Vinny yesterday. We did a, a live thing, but no recording of it. And all we did was argue about who's right for like an hour. And Well, everybody's right in their own mind. Well, that's what I was trying to get to, get to the point of is he wants to seem to use the existing status quo to prove a point that everybody has been taught. We have a right to our own belief system about it. So there, it's already doomed from the beginning. You're not going to agree with anyone. And uh, I told him when I started, let's go on and argue about it. But I think he really got mad. <laughs> he was he was yelling at me. I was yelling at him back. And he wouldn't listen. And I've heard it so many times that it seems like I don't listen, but I disagree. And I think it's because I share your value on that. It's individual. It's not a group think one size fits all thing. And it covers just about everything when you think about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just like this morning, and it just kind of sort of popped into my head that, 
you know, everybody out there is trying to make a home. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. and home is where the heart is. It's not. It's not a a location. Physical. Yeah. It's a mental yeah, kind of state of mind yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 So whenever you're feeling comfortable, or you're feeling happy, or you're feeling loved, or even feeling argumentative, you are. At home, at home, because you are what you're feeling, and your feelings are your home, and mm-hmm. you need to, in my humble opinion, mm-hmm. that's why you need to keep your home clean oh. and maintain your home. Yeah. You know how hard that is to do with all the input we get every day from media and life. The modern day life that we know as normal is so freaking sick. That we don't even seem to notice that it's sick anymore. We just tolerate it as a collective, yeah. you know, because, well, you got to give these people their freedom, their rights, their choices. And No, you don't. That's a bunch of shit. What you got to do is what we don't do is live by whatever's right for everyone. We don't do that. We segregate and we get in groups and we pick things and we want to be better than your group. And that's how we live like a bunch of monkeys. Well, and and that is kind of sort of the problem. You know, everybody has their own opinion, their own concept of how things should be. And then instead of just, you know, recognizing that, okay, everyone has their own concept, their own values, their own whatever, and everyone has to deal with the repercussions of or rewards of whatever they think or do, you know, instead of having that concept Hey, if I've got it, then everybody's got it. <laughs> that would be awesome. Instead of doing that, yeah, it's no. it's a uh, me, well, me, me, I've me, got me, it and Fuck mine you. is best, yeah. and so I'm going to force you, or yep. I'm going to do something to you. And either way, you know, if you're trying to force someone by verbally bullying them, or by actually physically bullying them, you are still using violence against them. So, well, you know, okay, now see, that's where okay. Here's where the argument starts because we all have our different values of what that word is defined as. Some people are, you know, hurt equally by words and violence, physical violence, and some people are hurt by words enough to not you know, to, to complain. I have been a victim of that myself over the years, Miss Mary. Well. You know, you can you can either be a victim of it or you can look at it as, wow, they were coming from a not so pleasant place, and that's thank God I'm not in that place. Yeah, but see, it's my mind. I'm the one thinking. So if you can invade my yeah. space and get me riled up at you about what you think, well, I'm letting you do it. It ain't you. Yeah. It ain't you kicking in any fucking door. I'm opening a door for you. And yeah, hmm, see, but. And when you realize that, that's the time when you go and you change your locks. Listening is so damn hard to do. It really is. Especially to an opposing viewpoint about something that is so freaking subjective. And we're so we're we're conditioned to believe shit from young ages about this and about that by family and school and religion and all this crap. And what mm-hmm. the truth is doesn't at this point in life, it doesn't even matter because we've got so many bullshit choices to choose from that you, the chances of you finding a truth in it is it's minimal. Minimal. Go marry a carrot and just end it, you know? Get over yourself. What's that, Doc? I mean, people want the most ridiculous rights recognized that we got problems in life right now. People are dying from inoculations. And these other idiots are getting more press because they support climate change. All right? People die every day from Rockefeller medicine, right? But you know what gets more press? Joe Biden's son is a crook. Yeah, well, who didn't know that? Come on. <laughs> are you people living in the... That s- apple did not fall far from the tree. Uh, no, it's not that. It's the design of the goddamn government that we have to deal with. They warned us when they wrote this crap in the first place. It's a republic if you can hold on to it. And then over 200 and something plus years, they turn it into a shithole led by Donald fucking Trump. The world's world's greatest... They turning it into a shithole within minutes. The ink wasn't even dry Uh, yet. You can't. Oh, come on. That's going too far. Uh, 
No, seriously. I mean, if you look at some of the uh, SCOTUS rulings from way back in the day right after <laughs> oh, the Constitution, yeah. <laughs> it's like they started subverting it right <laughs> off the bat. Okay. Well, you said when the ink wasn't dry, it didn't take that long to dry, do you? It's not like it, I don't you know. know. What? I don't know. Well, did I you mean, know if that someone was already pushing the limits? Did you know the English when, didn't leave leave the states as far as it was a matter of public record? They're leaving until like 1795 or eight. They were still present in the colonies for another 20 years after that freaking bullshit revolution. Nobody won the revolution. That too is another crock of shit. That's just the English tricking you with some more fucking fancy documents and words and promises. We all belong to that goddamn crown. They own every fucking thing. If it ain't bolted well, down to something else, they'll steal it and they'll own that too. Yeah. Well, you know, and they can, you know, they can say whatever they damn well please. That comes right back to what we were discussing earlier. They, they can say whatever they want, but do we have to be live it? Sure. You know, that's where... That's where the onus comes to us. Well, sure. Look look at the state Vinny got into because mm -hmm. I wouldn't agree. I tried to tell him my answer to the, his question personally is I don't really know. Now, I've been around a long time and people go, well, you're an old man. You should have a fucking clue by now. Well, maybe I should, but I don't. And that's my honest opinion because it changes. It fluctuates. Things, you know, one day I look at it this way and the next day I look at it that way. So there is no 100% way for me to behave in a society with anybody, friend or foe, that pleases anyone but me. I'm the one that's happy, not the guy listening. Never. It's always like they would get mad at me about something. Like you do, but that you don't take it to heart. You just go, well, that's how he sees it, poor guy. I can hear it in your tone occasionally. Yes. Yes, there are times when, yes, my tone betrays me and I do get a wee bit exasperated. But then I move along because then I stop and think, wait a minute here. I just let him control my mood. Yeah. What the fuck? It's not your problem until you want it to be your problem. And that's yeah. where I think all this training and indoctrination and pit and sides and all that shit works on us. Because it's so easy to fight with people and it's so difficult to be friendly. It's the opposite of what it should be. In my opinion, not your opinion. Well, you know, everything is opposite day. <laughs> opposite day. Okay. I mean, and, and it just is. And, and there's an awful lot of times where where you are given the truth, because from what I understand, the way I see things, we are, um, we're given the truth. It's just the way it's delivered steers you away from actually looking at the truth it hmm. takes that truth and then it starts steering you and and that's you know that's the subtle lie that's the long game hmm. that they play whoever they are but yeah uh, oops Wrong. you know i just and from what i understand they have to tell you the truth because it's a plausible deniability kind of thing you know, well, I told you the truth, but I gave it to you in the form of a movie, The Matrix. Or I told you the truth, and I gave it to you in the form of the movie, What Dreams May Come. Yeah, or I told you the somewhere. truth, but it came to you in the form of a book. Hmm. You know, whatever. But they can always say that, and they can lay that truth out there, but it's buried in so much gobbledygook and guck that you just plain, you know, it's worse than dog farts. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're having to dig. Okay, and the modern day 21st century mind is not to rebel against the system and change it, but to fight the system with its own rules to change it, which, same thing, it's yeah. not going anywhere. You're, you're being screwed. We're all being yeah, you screwed. Can't, and see, that's where you go back to that, that saying, never pick a fight with an idiot because they They'll will beat win. you with experience. Yeah. Simply because... They will bring you down to their level and then win with ex beat you with experience. Yeah, so yeah, why yeah. argue with an idiot? Why play the game by their rules? It's their rules. They wrote them, and they're the ones that go, oh, but wait. Those rules only apply to you if you play a certain card. Yeah. Or yeah. you it, call Uno. And, you and, know? But these things go on 
in society every freaking day. Our whole our whole society, all of it, is all based on lies and deception. No people. I've never met anybody who knows who knows that didn't really know that deep down inside. They all, yeah, I'm gonna vote for this guy and he'll make it better. But come on, really? Are you serious? No, not really. Hopeful. You know that that's what my wife calls it. Hopeful. And yeah. eh, hope is for people that are lo- that lost something. You know, it's, it's all in your head in the first fucking place. So, it, it, what do you compare it to? A breakup, a marriage, uh, losing a piece of property. I, I don't know. All these things that we're so attached to, and all they do is really just they confine you in a one spot at one time and force you to take care of them. So, losing them. Is it really losing, or are you just moving on to another epic saga? You know, what the fuck? What what was that I read the other day? Oh, wishes that are granted is God answering prayer. (laughs) Wishes that are not granted (laughs) is God protecting you. (laughs) And I thought... Wow, I mean, you know, if you want to, if you want to put that whole God thing, I don't like the whole God thing because it, there's just entirely too much stuff that's done in the name of. Hmm. In the name of what? You know what? The in the name of, of C O D. Whoops. Oh, it's two and, S's. Okay. G O D. No. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't. I I think there is a collective consciousness. I don't know that there is a old guy with a beard in flowing robes. Uh, oh, here we go again with all that. Well, you know they That's say my no, yeah, but they say you got to start somewhere. And I've heard both amounts equally of good and bad regarding religion over the life, my lifetime. Some of it's good and some of it's shite. There you go. And well, wait a minute. It's just like everything else then, isn't it? It's not yeah. it's not perfect. Well, these are the people that claim to be praising perfection and you know, they're in a clusterfuck of clusterfucks. Child abuse, rape and all this kind of shit. They're they fund freaking wars through their banking. It's disgusting. Look at the Jews do with their religion. Enslave the rest of us with freaking uh, compounded interest for the rest of your fucking life. Based on a on a piece of paper that was written 200 years ago and fucked over so bad the dog probably took a shit on it too but they just go oh well we'll tell you what it means see no don't look over there just listen to us and this is where we've be- we've evolved to this devolved I don't- what do you call it society it's a failure so fucked up and, well, but and who lets go of it? A collective monster is what it is. It's just it's a thought that that got started, and somebody said, "Hey, that's a good idea," and then it then they just dropped it and let it roll. Mm. And next thing you know, it's plowing over everybody because society says, "Well, who gives a flying?" I don't. I don't well, care what society says. So few of us are willing to admit that because it's not good to admit that. You get, I mean, if you got children and grandchildren and shit, and you got know, hair down my the social cre- my wait, social credit score is going to totally tank now. But I wasn't even done with my explanation, my dear. I know. Now you got hair down to the middle of your back and facial hair and this, that, and the other and tattoos. Hey. And you say the word hey. fuck like it's a compliment. Grandchildren and children tend to hmm, not be impressed. Hmm. Well, hmm. the individual hmm. over over the course of my lifetime, I'm telling you, join a fucking group, be in a club, be a part of this, be a part of that. But individual, it's frowned upon. Well, and I think that's because there's comfort in numbers. You know, if you have someone else that thinks like similar you to do. you, then yeah. it's... Yeah. Well, I'm surrounded by people that don't think exactly like I do because they're all willing participants in this society. I'm visiting it, and I abide by the rules. You know, I behave myself in public, but I'm not, I don't feel a part of it in any way. 
I'm just like a See, visitor and, still. And that's, that's where things are just really kind of messed up. People don't. People are so busy trying to fit in that they're not looking at, okay, hmm. what works for me first and foremost? What do I need to do to where what works for me does not cause someone else to show up at my front door with torches and pitchforks? You know, so get, people need to realize they need to get right with themselves before they start. And then yelling at everybody and telling them, you need to do this and you need to do that, that ain't going to get anywhere. All you're going to do is get either a bunch of people that ignore your ass hmm. or yell back at you. Yeah, and that don't solve well, shit. I'm just reading the chat. And even Beetle agrees. You know, when when you present yourself in a certain way, people take offense to it no matter what. So all I'm trying to put point out and prove is being your true self in life is almost always a fucking failure. And then it's because the other people playing want you to behave a certain way. They cannot accept yeah. you the way you truly are. They want you to do and say what they want you to do and say. And you, you either do it or you get the fuck up and you get out. And there's no other way to deal with it. In other words, they want to control you. And instead of worrying about controlling everybody else, you need to learn to control yourself. And you know, if everybody worried about controlling themselves, I bet you we wouldn't have near the problems we do now because they'd be so busy controlling themselves instead of telling everyone else, you need to do it this way because I said so. Well, big whoop for you. Hmm. Have you ever done that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. That's how I know I, I, am a, I know I have. Very... You're going to do it the way I told you to do it. And there's always two reasons behind that. Finance and uh, some kind of authority over age, age being an authority, experience, just being bigger or older than other people, shit like that. You know what? I have learned a lot more about life and how to get along with people from paying attention to my grandkids than I have from my elders. <laughs> oh. Seriously. Wow. You know, little ones teach you so much more if you're willing to sit there and pay attention to them. Because they ask questions about shit that makes you figure out what you're going to tell them. Well, yeah, they ask questions. And if they're not, you know, if you don't mess with them, if you don't do vile things to them, they really are very accepting, very loving little critters, and they are very inquisitive. There ain't nothing wrong with being inquisitive and loving and accepting. It's when someone else comes in and uses that innocence mm. so that they can do all kinds of mean and nasty things. Those are the people that really need to look in themselves again and say, hmm, what made me do that? That." Hmm. Am hmm. I just a sick individual? I've got an I've got an interesting topic to bring up to you out of nowhere. I want to okay. I want you to tell me what you think of this. Accepting okay. I don't know as an answer. That's what I'm gonna write in the notes. That's gonna be our little thing. So I wanted to see what you had to say on it. Because kids There's say that all the time. I, I remember oh, when yeah. I was a child and I tell my parents I didn't know something. And if I didn't know it, they get mad because I didn't know. And I'm like, wow. It was very intimidating to be yelled at when I was really little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's like, why did you do that? I don't know. But it toughened me up for the beatings, you know, when life and li life in general, being, uh, being treated badly uh, set me up for school, I think, because school was horrible. Hated it. I was always looking for reasons to not go to school. And then one day I realized I don't have to go if I don't want to go. I was about 12. Hmm. Yeah. Some kids had a ditch party going on. And uh, I heard about it. I went, hey, what the hell's a ditch party? Because I was just completely uh, un unassociated with any kind of bad kids or bad kind of behavior. Until about that period in life. And then things changed. I went to that ditch party and things just kind of cleared up for me about control. And who had it and what it was going to do to me. Hmm. See, and I really... 
Now, I'm, I'm going to say this, and mm. yet I also realize that I am controlling things that everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. does. <laughs> yeah, I, know. Everybody I know. I know. I do it all the time. Try not to, it, but I do. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like, okay, I would appreciate if, yeah. you know, and fill in the blank, or why did you, mm. or um, you need to stop doing – Right, you know, but what, what about blank. accepting I don't know as an answer to a specific question, okay? Because I, I tried to use that answer with uh, Vinny yesterday, and it went absolutely fucking nowhere. He was demanding that I choose a freaking path that he laid down. You have to do it within these bi- guidelines and these rules. And I went, no, I don't I have to do anything. I'm telling you what I think. Wouldn't allow it. And that's okay. And we all somehow do that to each other when we're not getting along. I think that would be the the way the information is being interpreted, some kind of force. You know, you're not listening to me, that kind of thing. And it's all and it's always about I don't know. When you say those three words to somebody, it pisses them the fuck off. They get angry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. And, you know, I have come to realize that the more that I know, the more I realize I don't know. You know, every time I learn something, I find out that, wow, you know, you learn one thing and you got (laughs) Mm -hmm. 20 more questions that just (laughs) pop into your head. Do fish have ears? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of things that I don't know. Mm. And there's a lot of things that I don't want to know. So, you know, that's kind of the way that works. But... mm. Hmm. And that thing yesterday with Finney, there were several times where I wanted to jump in. And then I kind of went, mm, no, I'm just going to let this play out. And I, I, I feel better with myself. Just well, letting it what got your attention that you did want to jump in? And, you know, what's just me and you today? We're going to give everybody a break from arguing and screaming and yelling real stuff. Me and you argue, but it's, it's, it's a little different. Yeah. yeah. But what got your attention about that conversation? And... I would like you, if you, anything I said that stuck with you where I'm wrong, tell me what it was, what you think I don't, I don't see right. Because uh, that's what well, this is about, how we see things and agreeing on what we see, and we can't do it. It's impossible. Well, the way I see it, and he was talking about abortion is murder, which I happen to think that way as well. But I think as a society, we have been convinced that abortion is a form of of birth control, which yes, it is, but it gets lumped in with contraceptives. And the difference between, and if you look this up, and I actually did this a few years back, if you look up, there is a difference between contraceptive and birth control. A contraceptive is a preventative measure, whereas birth control is how you control that birth, whether it be natural birth, whether it be induced labor, whether it be C-section, whether it be abortion. All of those are a form of controlling the birth. That is after conception has happened. And contraceptive is an attempt to prevent the conception. And there's only a few cases in, quote, unquote, his story where without the actual act, conception has occurred. Or so we have been told in his story. You know, and, and it's and it's in just about every religious text that somebody had a virgin birth. Somebody did. Oh yeah, well, that's what happened. What kind but, of insanity is that? I mean, that's just lame. You realize well, how lame that lame. is, right? I mean, it's just insane. Well, it's and no, to me it's that's insane. like okay. Way back then, apparently, somebody had the technology to do test tube babies. I don't know. I don't know. Because we really don't know what our history is because it's been written for us. Right, right, right. I know. And we weren't there, so you got to kind of just wing it and go with whatever sits with you at that time. And then, and I've been doing an awful lot of research and a lot of this stuff lately, and a lot of the stuff that I was taught yeah. no longer sits well with me. Uh. So I'm still kind of sort of – I will never actually know what happened back in the day because I wasn't there. So once again, here's that answer. I don't know. See? But there's an awful lot of things that seem a lot more plausible than the BS we have been taught. 
Uh You know, and and we have been taught to lump some things together that really should not be lumped together, Uh a.k.a. contraceptives and birth control. I don't think those two should be lumped together, my personal opinion. Yeah, but you're Uh, also... women make a choice, they make that choice prior to. Yeah, but you take the words and... Some words, you'll define them more clearly to understand what they really mean than other people. Yeah. That's a big That's a big part of this is learning what the hell we're saying to each other. And then there's so many more layers to it that I think that, uh, like, Rob works is still, to this day, he'll send me links on resonance because these guys opened me up to this resonance and vibration and I, in the back of my mind it was always there something more to life but the god thing eh, groups of people reading a book no that's school so i thought hmm and over a lifetime i've come up with my own personal version of whatever that is i don't even know what to call it it's just something something there and uh i think that if you believe that your life is shit well, then your life is shit, and it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with what you possess or what you rent or or lease or eat or where you live or who you live with. I've met a lot of uh, successful people financially in life that mm-hmm. had no self-esteem and were physically ill of illnesses that they could have fucking avoided through diet, but were so slovenly and lazily with their money, they didn't didn't care. And I was like, wow. Because they didn't care about themselves. That's, they, yeah, that's what they, I said. Yeah. Low self-esteem. You, know, you don't care yeah. about yourself. You're not going to care about what you do to anyone else. But it redefines to yourself what a disease is that you've gotten from life. If you yeah. got diabetes, okay, there's two explanations. There's the medical explanation that's kind of some of it's true. And then there's the truth, and the truth is going to crush you when you find out what the fuck it is. It's not pretty. Let's just say that. Well, some people, in my experience, my history in life, uh, I've lived among uh, ill people. (laughs) One of my friends had a husband who had diabetes, and they had a shitload of money. They were uh, living in a, a big house. They had plenty of money. They weren't in any kind of secret debt or wanted by the FBI or nothing. But the husband had diabetes and wouldn't uh, follow the treatment to get better. He just kept getting yeah. worse. So, well, because that's his the give a shitter was broke. But that's the point is the poor people think that, oh, money fixes everything. And no, it doesn't. That keeps you poor, scrapping amongst everybody else for that you know, crumb that you're going to share. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm going to get another piece of paper. Woo-woo! I am rich. I have five pieces of paper, and you only have one. Woo-woo! Yeah. Look, I, when, when I was a little kid, I remember millionaires. Yeah. In, that was the thing to look. You know, if you wanted to follow finance or be something, or get a job and all that, they had millionaires. You go, wow, look at that. And mm-hmm. they got this, and they got that. Now a guy with a million dollars doesn't own 10% of what the guy owned in, when I was a kid. And oh, yeah. all they got is a bank note that says they're worth a million dollars. They don't own nothing. They think they own shit, but when you read the paperwork, you find out, no, the bank still owns it, huh? Yeah, I can't. Yeah. See, there's another one of those I don't know moments because I can't remember anybody in my life of the female persuasion besides Circle that has ever not argued with me about who owns what in, as far as banking goes. And it's broken up relationships. Well, you know, that is one of the biggest um, reasons for relationships coming apart is arguing over money. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And me and Sir, I don't think, I think we have a good argument about once a year. So just keep the blood going. And it's never about anything of any value or importance, something stupid. And that was the deal. I think we kind of agreed on that in the first place. We never argue about money or family. Like her mother, I get along better with her mother than uh, I do with you. Well, 
We're just, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. No, we're just, whenever she comes up, she's very cordial, she's smiley, she's nice. They bring stuff to eat. You know, they're uh, family people. So it's a, hmm, it's a big change from what I'm used to seeing in the States. And then with my own mixed family, because they were all crazy when they got drunk. Insane. Mm. Mm. Insanely drunk. Oh, yeah. I, I came from a, a family of... When my, my father had uh, four brothers and five sisters alive when I was born. And we all survived the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Some of them are dead, but oh, the, the uncles are all gone. My father and his brothers and his sisters. I think there's there was the last count I had. There was two sisters hanging on, but I, I've lost track of the family because of uh, political beliefs and marrying a Dane. <laughs> Not coming back to America hurt me. Getting off of Facebook hurt me. They got kind of pissed off at that. But yeah, know. but you know what? When people leave your life, there is a reason behind that. Well, I don't know. I don't. So I'm not. I'm 60 now, so all the all the yeah, old but, shits all healed up. And yeah, but aren't you in a better place I don't, with those people not being in your life? Don't I, you feel I don't, better now? No, see, that's what I don't have a value system to really figure that part out. I just know that life took me where I'm at, and I went yeah. with it. There you go. And, it didn't want me where I good, was. Right? Yeah, but it was see where I was. It was good to me. But other people didn't like what I was doing. They wanted me to do something different, and I wouldn't do it. So there now, so life went a different direction, so I could continue to be me, and not have to be what somebody else wanted me to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, Cirque, I guess, has her own personal expectations, but whatever the hell I am seems to meet her. You know, it meets her halfway. She doesn't do a lot of complaining about, well, you don't do this and you don't do that. You're not a so-and-so. and You go to school and learn how to fix your own fucking computer and leave Grim alone, you bastard. <laughs> 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 Shit like that. She could. She's smart like that. She knows She knows how to do the one, you know, the sharp, sharp, sharp jab to the friendship yep. phone. Sure. But uh, she doesn't. Well, you know, and that's... That's part of Cycle's charm. Yeah, but see, be, she's not one of those people that says, "I ditch it, Sal." But being slow on the computer is not an attribute that I'm proud of. It's like, wow, of all the things in life, right now in my life, the one thing I I seem to be using the most is the one thing I'm the weakest at. <laughs> it's amazing, you know. It amuses me. Which makes you dependent on others to help you when you. Get yourself into a bit of a sticky wicket. I see what what would con- that be? A, what would fall into that category in my day? I I don't I don't have problems like that. My problem is the dog won't stop barking at the neighbors. Uh, oh, my neighbor, he's got cancer, and oh. he's been getting treatments and this and that. And I just went to the grocery just before the radio, and the uh-huh. man is up on his roof working on the roof in the rain. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's it's tough. I'm telling you, if that was me, I'd have been calling people. Oh, I'm I'm weak. Help me, help me. <laughs> and this freaking guy's up there on his roof, doing what he needs to do to keep his house together. And see, that's that's the difference in people. Some people, it's like I'm not going to let this knock my ass down. Hell of this shit. And I'm be done. Yeah, and, I'm gonna tend to it. And I'm not one of those people that is what. Uh, that's always concerned about what's good for everybody, those do-getters. You know, well, he could fall off his house. I better go help him get down. He's made the wrong decision. Now, nah, mind your own fucking business. Leave him be. That's my thing. If he wants to risk falling off his fucking house, that's not my choice to make for him. So I don't think he's older than I am. So I don't think he's not thought it through. That, well, I could fall off the house. Well, I ain't doing it. Or I could fall off the house. I'm going up anyway. How do I know what decision he made to get there? So I leave life alone. You know? Keep your advice to the fucking internet where nobody pays any attention to it. Don't actually yeah. speak and tell people what to do in real life. It's horrible. <laughs> 
See, and I'd be one of those people. I'd go over and and I'd wait till it, it looked like he wasn't doing anything. That if I were to holler up at him, mm -hmm. I would make him lose his balance. See, and I'd there, go, yep. yo, you got this? Yeah, no. Need any help? No, no, no. Me, you me. don't need any help. Fine. Okay, I have. Me on the roof in the rain with another. Are you? That's a recipe for hospital bills. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go out underneath another guy. What are you nuts? I'll pass on that arrangement. Ooh. Well, he Ooh, that's, he's yeah. bigger than me. I'm going to fall first, and he's going to fall on top of me. So, no, that ain't going to work. Oh, looky, Brighton joined us. Hey, Whoa, Brighton. Who's, who's Brighton? Brighton is I a... I have no idea. Brighton is a city in England. Yeah, I've have I been to Brighton? No. I've never I been haven't. to Brighton. I didn't see any reason. I got to London. <laughs> South oh, of London, London. Eh, I wasn't too crazy about that. Yeah. Went north. I, had, yeah, I, like I went north. to London basically so we could fly back home. And, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, you know, paying attention in the cab ride and, and all that fun stuff. That that was enough London for me. <laughs> like, what year? Okay. Yeah, what year? Uh, let's see. Seven years ago. So, 2012. Hey, I got another one of my weird questions. You, okay. Do you think we're isolated on the Internet? Ooh, that's a toughie. Well, I think we're isolated, and yet we're totally connected. Right, but, you, yeah, I realized yesterday, you know, because me and Vinny argue and banter. I don't have any problem with screaming and yelling at Vinny because we, we've come beyond all that shit. But I did realize, wow, how isolated we are in our own thinking beyond what we agree with or don't agree with to be in a group on the, you know, in the RLM chat. Yeah. So to, to go beyond that and say, I don't know about something so personal and so obvious what the right answer is that you won't say it out loud it makes other people kind of go, hey. I'm yell at you till you change your mind. <laughs> yeah, it's that white elephant in the room. What the hell did white elephants ever do to get lumped in with that shit? Okay, so that's how, what I want to know. So how did we get so isolated in, into our own thing and then expect other people to be a part of it? It's weird to me. You know, I like I don't expect I, you to live the lifestyle I live. I don't think you could do it. See, and I think I think the way we got so isolated is that the internet and cell phones made it so prevalent, so easy to just carry on a conversation remotely. It's that face to face where you have an instant reaction, you know, that that got us to where we weren't quite so isolated, or we became very isolated because it's like, shit. When I speak my mind, someone punches me in the face. So yeah, you yeah. quit hanging out with people that punch you in the face. But and that's where it's we are isolated and yet we're not because we're we're so insulated by this wonderful little interweb where we can go on and we can say some of the most wonderful things and some of the most obnoxious things and the only recourse we have is ooh you got booted off a social media network or ooh someone started trolling you or ooh Someone disagreed with you on a computer screen. And lots of people out there are like, oh, <laughs> they disagreed with me on a computer screen. Well, there ought to be a law. Oh, hmm. grow up. Grow up. So, I mean, little so kids, you know, when little kids have those kind of interactions and – hair gets pulled and someone gets pushed down and maybe someone gets, you know, the whole three stooges kind of thing going on with a yah, yah, yah. <laughs> and then you look back five minutes later and they're out there playing again. Yeah. Because kids have a very short memory and kids just see, oh, hey, they're doing something fun. Did I argue with them five minutes ago? Yeah, but that's all done. I already pushed him down. He pushed me down. It's all good. Let's go right, play. But see, see society got to remember the arch enemy society is always uh, set the pace to standard. You know, what you have to do and how you have to behave to be uh, a successful part of the society. So people will look up at you instead of 
down at you. And one thing yeah. I'm telling you from experience, and I love it. One thing I get noticed for is my lack of having a freaking smartphone. That is frowned upon by the public at large, let me tell you. Because I'm an old relic from another time, and I won't get in tune with the modern man. And I tell him to, you can go fuck yourself. I'm not getting in tune with the modern fucking man. Don't want to get in tune. Don't care. I don't even really want to even do more than recognize that it's there, but it's in my face all the time. I can't not see it. But to participate in it and uh, hmm, not create a, a disturbance is the goal. Yeah. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Because deep down inside, I think this fringe people that do the RLM, people that listen to the shit we do on the radio, I think they know there's a better way than what we do. And it's beyond politics and finance and all that argument shit. Just the idea that what we're doing is so wrong on so many levels and it can be proven with an internet. All you got to do is type in a thing in your browser and you'll get a link or a, a video to explain it to you. And you go, wow, no. Yep. Because the truth is right in front of everybody's face. But how many people have freaking time actually to uh, look for the truth? And if they did find it, what would they, <laughs> what would they see? You know, maybe they would think, oh, that's this is how my aunt, when my aunt was getting treated badly about Hillary, she's a supporter of the Democrats. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just stories the Republicans are making up about her. She didn't do anything wrong without actually having any personal knowledge about the fucking argument that she's protecting Hillary in. Just party politics is good enough because that's her indoctrination into politics. Never developed. Well, any kind of party politics, whether it's Democrat or Republican, it's still a party and you're not invited. Yeah, well... By the way, you get to pick up the tab, but you're still not invited. And in a sense, your party politics dictates a personality type in certain situations. And I have a really bad memory about this particular aunt because uh, she made a decision years ago for me not to see her sister because of the way I handled the phone call to do it. She didn't like what I said. And the sister that she didn't bring was the aunt that I'm closest to at the time. And she died, and I didn't get a chance to see her between then and the time she passed. It was pretty brief. So, me and the aunt that survived, I don't even want to talk to her. <laughs> I didn't for years. And then I, I ended up helping my mom all that time and having to answer the phone to her when she called because she was friends with my mom. Yeah. And my mom didn't agree with her politics, but they were still friends. Right? What my mom didn't know about her her favorite sister-in-law is how she treated me. It was like, wow. Like, uh, incidental, you know. I'm not bringing her because I don't like the way you talk. Well, fuck you. Fuck you, then. And this is this is the my experience of how adults handle fucking situations. It's pitiful. Other people making decisions about how... You know, what they do based on what you say. What kind of crap is that? You're either going to do something or you ain't. Not wanting to is so hard for people to say, I don't want to come see you or I don't want to do it. Instead, well, I don't like the way you're talking to me. Something like that. Well, you know, making a decision that's giving someone else control over your behavior. Well, I was you know, when you make a decision too. based on, well, I don't like the way that person talks. Oh, yeah, so you're giving them control. Yeah. yeah, in a way. Over your thoughts and your behavior. But the results were horrible from just something so trivial at the time. It didn't seem like anything at the moment. Well, it's always yeah. the little trivial things. You know that last straw that broke the camel's back kind of scenario? It's <laughs> always, always a little thing that pushes it over the top. Always. Well, I think the life lessons in the negative sense have always made it easier for me to go over the next hill to see what's on the other side. You know, if I'd had a lot of success young at being stable and being in one place and everything working great, 
I might have gone that way. But I had more success with going to see something I'd never seen before. Wow, look at that. That's what got me excited. Not not routine. And now, 60 years old, uh, I have anything but a routine with Cirque. So I'm kind of like right where I want to be with life. It's very difficult to put words to without saying anything too specific. So I'm making it very vague. But the you know the paths match. Me and Cirque are on two different paths in life, and we yeah. crossed and somehow joined up together. And it's very chaotic still, and that's the kind of the way I like it in a way. Well, yeah, you guys have parallel paths, but that doesn't mean you're on the same one. It's just they're parallel, and you may just not have a whole hell of a lot of rocks and bramble in between you. Is all. <laughs> No big deal, big. but you're still, you know, you're walking parallel, mm. and that's all good. So we agree we're dis- we're isolated on the internet. Of course, it's hard to define in words, but it's an interesting question. Now I got another one for you. You might okay. like this one. What is dangerous about freedom? Ah, uh, the personal responsibility part of it. No. Oh my goodness! If you are free, if you are totally free, yeah, totally. Well, no, 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 no. Then you have to be responsible for everything you say and do. But you added totally. I just said, what is dangerous about freedom? The thing that's dangerous Mm -hmm. about freedom is the responsibility that comes along with it. Oh, I'm going to put that in. Freedom ain't free. Okay. Oh. All right, I'm putting this in the notes so we got some little notes for people to follow what we chatted about if they care. Um, the responsibility ah, of what again? It's just the, it's the responsibility that goes along with that freedom. Ah, that goes along with okay. Because man, oh man, if you really want to be free, you, that means you got to take personal responsibility. I don't for everything. Oh, if I did want to, I wouldn't have never done what I did. Yeah. But see, freedom, I traded in my freedom for uh, the be to be in a relationship. But that's not trading in your freedom. You yeah, are it is. still a free oh, individual. No, it's just that no. you have freely made the choice no, 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 to no. walk a similar path no, with someone. No, no, it's no. still freedom. Mm-mm. No, freedom, freedom is... has nothing do with your actual physical locality or anything you're doing with this body freedom is a freaking mindset okay and in my mindset my mind says i don't have to answer to anyone if i am free well guess what i've got hannah i've got the doctor i've got circle there's three entities right there that have to be paid attention to whether i feel like it or not that's my responsibility that i took on and went okay i'll do this shit and you got, it's hard to remember all that when you don't want to do something. <laughs> but you were free to mm-hmm. take on that responsibility. So that's just more responsibility that you just added to your freedom. You are free to do whatever you need to mm-hmm. to maintain the lifestyle that you have decided you are really accustomed to, that you really enjoy. Wow. You know, that's, that is freedom. Mm. You know, when you're free to make that decision and free to say, I will take on this responsibility, yeah. you just well, exercise well, your freedom. What about if you take on your freedom and you don't like it? Are you still free? That is that is still a decision that you, I mean, once you make a decision that, okay, well, this freedom shit really sucks, yeah. you're still being free enough to at least <laughs> Admit to yourself that this kind of sucks, and I'm not really liking it right now. But you don't know. Maybe tomorrow it'll be better. Maybe in five minutes it'll be better. Maybe in five minutes it'll be worse. You don't know, but you are free to experience that and take on the responsibility and not blame someone else. But I like to blame other people. Oh, don't take my well, freedom Well, and you to are blame. free to make that choice. Oh. But and you are also free to deal with the rewards and repercussions of that choice. Well, then how? Who's you're taking all the fun out of blaming Trump? <laughs> you know, you can blame Trump all you want. I don't really care for the guy, but that's you know based on just what I have seen. 
But I'm not going to sit here and go death to Trump because <laughs> I, I am not going to put anything <laughs> out into the universe <laughs> oh, that I don't want coming back at me. Oh, you got plans? Well, no, I don't want to be the president. Good God. That's, right. Uh, but, see, to okay. me, that's messed up, wanting to be in a position where you have to be responsible for everyone else. Who mm. the fuck wants that? Okay. Do you, no, you have to not be right in the head do you to think want that, that position. Do you think that freedom and plans work together? I don't. Freedom and plans? Yeah. Oh. You can't. You can have one or the other, but not both at the same time. It's like fear and love. You can't hold both of them. You got to put one down. Which one do you want to hold, and which one do you want to put down? It's all up to you. And well, you know, you can you can plan to do whatever you want to do, but yeah. the, the rest of the universe will go. He's got plans. He's got plans. <laughs> oh, let's see what we can do to mess with those. <laughs> I know. It seems that way, doesn't it? Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. You know, it's the best laid plans of mice because mice definitely, hmm. you know, they have plans. Eat, shit, and yeah. breed. That's their plans. Oh. My cat hmm. yesterday yeah. messed with the plans oh. of a mouse, oh. and she brought it to me. Oh, how and sweet. Said, Look at how good I was, Mommy, and that That's poor right. little mouse laid there and breathed its last breath, yep. and then I flushed it. <laughs> oh, today on the way to the grocery... I often pass people with dogs. Not a big deal. But this couple was standing. They were waiting for the road to clear. And their dog was kind of, I don't know, about twice hand his size. A little taller and a lot broader. But when the dog, mm -hmm. when I'm passing, I've seen the dogs. I know the dog's wagging its tail. and it's, I've seen the ears and the nose. And as I walk by, I just tried to put my hand so the dog could smell it because she probably smelled Hannah, her, or him, mm -hmm. whatever. And the yeah. couple, the couple that were with the dog, smile at me and go, "Wow, oh, that's cool," you know, whatever they said. And I, as I walk by, so I let the dog smell. Some people are intimidated by big dogs, and some yeah, uh, some big dogs. There's a way to dog, any dog. There's a way to tell if you can put your hand down or if they're going to bite you or not. It's, they give tells, and sometimes I have a hard time explaining what I see in words. But I just I always know, and it was nice to be accepted by the dog owners for doing it, you know, because I don't do that very often. I mind my business here, you know? keep my distance. Well, and you know that's that's that whole thing of learning to read body language. It doesn't just apply to people; it applies to critters too. Yep, yep. And they're waiting at the street, so I just it was just an unusual thing because uh, I passed tons of people walking their dog, and I won't let them walk their dog. You know, mm -hmm. don't, and I don't stop with wherever there's some girl with a dog just to pay attention to the dog. I'm 60 fucking years old, so those things don't don't happen. But well, I don't know. Maybe it is the body language. I, but whatever it was, like a natural thing for me to just do. It was so smooth, like I meant to do it. Not like the cat running into the you know the glass door because he thought it was open. Yeah. And then they get yeah. up and act like, oh, I meant to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not that kind of I meant to do that. Yeah. yeah, okay. I get that. Yeah. I get that. So. And yeah, that's, you know, it's like when I, I go to the city with my girls and they, one of the first things they told me before, actually, my youngest daughter, as we were um, getting on the train to head into downtown Denver, um, she said, now, mom. Don't just start talking to people. And I was saying, I said, Why? Yeah. Because yeah, you do that. And yeah. I said, yeah, I do. Country girl. Yeah, yeah I do. And, Circle. you know, so once we yeah. get to downtown yeah. and we're wandering around Union Station and, and I'm making eye contact with as many people as will make eye contact back with me. And I'm smiling and I'm saying hi and I'm saying, how you doing? And, and, and my daughter, next thing I know, she's like five steps ahead of me and just shaking her head mm. well we get to my oldest daughter's apartment and before we go downstairs now mom this is an area where there's an awful lot of street people and i went i noticed that <laughs> walking here yeah. i noticed that and and she said well mom you really need to be careful and wow. i said, oh i'll be careful and so what did i do first 
bunch of street people that was, you know, one of them was a musician, and it's like, dude, he's really good. So I gave him some money, and my kids are just <laughs> oh, That's what they're doing. They're trying to get some money. That's well, you know, point. but he was he was an excellent performer. Yay! So I, you showed I some thank good him taste. for his performance. But you know, walking down the street and and someone comes up and and just kind of looks at me, but then looks away real quick, and I thought, oh, bless her heart, because you know, yeah. people that do that, hmm. somewhere along the way, they have they have been told, don't do that. So I went out of my way to say, hi, how are you doing, and just smiled and. And said, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? And they just kind of sort of shocked. And they went, yeah. And I said, I'm out hanging with my daughters. And both of my girls were going, Mom. And I said, what? What? I'm conversing with someone on the street. It's no big deal. But, you know, a lot of people, if if you just treat them like they are people as well, then they kind of sort of perk up just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then they're not quite so glum and grump and all that fun that's i think that's what's wrong with the world is people aren't and that's where the internet has isolated us you can't make eye contact on the internet <laughs> you can't say hi how you doing gorgeous day isn't nah. it nice day for a walk isn't it see you know, and, it, and we still have a little bit left there's enough people split here got some people glued to their phone you got people like sir that use the damn thing all the time but she doesn't like when she comes off the train it's she's not talking on it unless it's work then it'd be yeah. a, a you know she's got a, two damn phones one for work go figure but uh yeah well, she's been home a lot lately too so it that's what i was intimating about it about having no balance is the chaos is it's aggravating when it happens, but it's really, if, if it wasn't what I wanted, I wouldn't get it. See? And that's where that personal responsibility thing hits me is, you know, accepting the shit you think you don't like with the shit that you like. Because there's going to be equal, hey, Benny, there's going to be equal parts of both. Well, and you know you really need the things that you don't like in order for a comparison. Well, I don't like that, but this this makes me feel better, so I must like this, whereas that doesn't make me feel so good. So it gives you a, a good way of of calibrating, hey, that's not so good, but this, yes, this is good. Well, I can so give you an example you need that. of something that, that's both good and bad at the same time. Okay. But this is, again, it's a subjective, personal opinion. And I, I would venture to guess before I even say it out loud, Grim will probably say it's no big thing. And I would gonna, I will go with uh, the shot of baking soda with water. I have uh-huh. never gotten used to the, the taste of baking soda. So yeah. at the same moment, but then again, I truly believe that Cancer does not live in an alkaline environment, and the way to achieve that is to keep baking soda in it. So I do it, right? So in my mind, at the same time, for somehow, just for a split, you know, where I'm, I'm both relieved and appalled both at the same moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that a spoonful of sugar makes medicine go down. Bullshit is for sissies. You know, I want to remember why I'm doing what I'm doing too. I don't want to forget the purpose of doing it is to, you know, and sometimes it's like uh, when I do work on wood or something and I'm taking sandpaper to that wood, I'm smoothing it down a rough edge. Well, you're damaging the wood to make it look better. See, Mm because it wasn't like that when you got it, you made it that way. See, so just, (laughs) Just like that, it creates some kind of friction inside of me that where, well, I don't like it, but I'm going to do it because I know it's better for me to do it than to not do it. That's what I was trying to get at. And it's personal responsibility is the behavior that I feel I got toward it. Not, not well, if I absurd this and Hannah that and the cat, this. no, it's all about me, personal me. It's got nothing to do with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. You have taken on the responsibility of, of being livable with other creatures. 
be well, made two-legged or four-legged. I'm trying that is to, yeah. a responsibility, yeah. being responsible enough for yourself yeah. to say, okay, I'm going to be yeah. livable yeah. around these people because yeah. I like having them around me. Yeah. And it's not really something that I'm aware of when it's happening, but when we're on the radio or if it come up in a conversation, I'd see it. But it's not something that when I, I'm doing shit with my family-in-law, I, I'm so used to them being around after all this time that it's just normal to me. That's yeah. my normal day now. I mean, I couldn't see my day being any other way than the way it is. And I've never been in that position in life. I've always wondered, ah, whenever I've been somewhere, I've always planning to go somewhere after. Oh, I'm going to go here after this. And then I got here, and in Copenhagen, I didn't like that much. I liked the city, uh, but eh, it was a city. I didn't want to do that. So Cirque went, hey, let's do this. I went, hey, that looks pretty freaking cool, Johnny. Let's try that. And here we are. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's Rudy how he just said don't damage the wood. I think he's talking about a different kind of wood. <laughs> well, that's right. See, and then I got mine licensed out to Circle Co. So, hmm. that marriage crap, man, I'm telling you, it can really interfere with your your uh responsibilities in life. <laughs> Yeah, it It'll, adds a whole bunch, it don't it? It gives them to you. Yeah, sure. Well, fuck. Well, I'm sure there are other folk on the internet, like uh, I don't name anybody, Grim, that prefer the uh, you know the bachelor thing being self you know self sustaining, self sufficient, self reliant. Yeah. I was going with mm -hmm. sustaining. Well, same thing. And yeah. some of us, I I don't I don't feel I do so well alone. I'm not an, an alone kind of person in the first place. And I happen to like females. So, you know, there you go. There you go. Well, and I, you know, I'm, I like my alone time. Yeah. But I also like time spent with others. So. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Like tomorrow we got the mom and sis coming over. and The girls are going to do some girly stuff in the kitchen. Sometimes they sew, sometimes they cook, sometimes they don't do shit. They just fuck around. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's amazing to for me to see people get along in the same family that well. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, maybe I understand it's, that. Maybe it's a matter of maturity. I don't know who is to freaking figure this one out. But I don't have a, a great long history of people getting along wherever I went. I'm usually in the middle of some kind of drama because yeah. people were crazy where I was coming from. Yeah, I understand that. You know, my family was extremely chaotic, and yet we all tended to get – it was definitely one of those, hey, hey, I can beat on him, but you can't kind of situations, you know. But I think that's part of large family is – you know, you abuse each other, but someone else steps into the abu and starts whipping out some abuse. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Now you got all of us kicking your ass. So, yeah, hmm. I understand that. Hmm. Well, I'm going to exercise my freedom to blame Trump. It's all okay, Trump's well, fault. You Trump, go ahead Trump, and you Trump, blame Trump. the trumpet. Good God. He, he really is quite the trumpet. Have you noticed that? I mean, he's always blasting something well, out there. Actually, no. I I really don't know. I don't open up Trump links. I just read read a few things. I but I don't sit and watch the videos. So I'm not impressed with his wife. Uh, I don't give a flying fuck if their kid is retarded, autistic, or has three fucking dicks. I'm not interested in any of that shit. So, well, and that's okay. So yeah, but he's just like Obama to me, just another idiot. You know, going out in the public eye, taking the shit for the bankers. And you know what? One motherfucker ever says nothing about a banker or a lawyer. They always tell you the bullshit. Oh, we're not going to have any, uh, no lobbying in my administration. And then after their administration's over, they had twice as many as the one before them. See, they just lie. It doesn't matter what the truth is about anything. No, nobody's accountable. We This is a... This is like a free for all, and uh, there you go. Do it. That's all part of that society mm -hmm. bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's for the good of society <laughs> that 
Okay. The needs of the society <laughs> outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Bullshit. Bullshit. Because it takes a few or one clumped together to make you. So, bullshit. Well, then don't go all crazy about this one because I don't think it takes a village. I think it takes a village to raise an idiot. I don't think it takes a village to raise a child. I think it takes, it takes a village to raise anything. No, it doesn't. Sure it does. My two parents managed to raise me without any intervention for like five, oh, you almost had no, five years. No outside influence whatsoever in your life. Other nothing, than your parents. nothing that they didn't allow. Yeah. Period. My father controlled every freaking thing as much of the time as he could. That's why he had me reading and writing and doing all that stuff so early. Because, hmm. yeah, when I got to school, they were pissing up my mom. But wait, you taught him how to read and write already. You, you've ruined everything. What, are you, what were you thinking? And yeah, because now he's bored and we have to yeah, deal with it. Well, she didn't tell me that until a few years ago. But if, I, if I'd have known that, you, I, that was explained a lot. But, yeah, my my parents had the, uh, the skills or the interest or whatever to spend with me and keep out. No, it wasn't TV. No, I don't remember TV until after I was in school. I remember there's a TV in the living room, but I don't remember seeing any of it. Hmm. And then before, well. before the school years, the only real thing I can remember is my uncle was visiting us. And I was three. I know this, the, the time frame from talking to my mom. And my uncle was trying to scare me and my brother, tapping on the window in the dark. And my father is at the door telling us, don't be afraid. It's your uncle. He's trying to scare you. You know, don't, don't fall for it. And that kind of reality thing, instead of, you know, uh, the grown-ups getting a kick out of us being afraid, they were trying to teach us not to be afraid. Yeah. So, well, you know, yeah, and yeah, at, at an early age. Skin. You remember the, the high diving board at the swimming pool? Yes, I do. Okay. Oh, my God. It took I, me forever to get the courage to get up there. Okay. <laughs> I was four years old trying to climb the damn thing to go do it. They had a new guard that didn't know me yet. And my dad says I was trying to kick him in the face because he was trying to grab me by my legs to stop me from going up. And he had to come over there and, you know, Talk to guy because he didn't know. Who, you know yeah, this kid does this because I was so little. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of kid that they raised to go do shit. And then when I'd go and do shit, uh, the older I would get, the, the more restrictions were being set. No, you can't do this. Wait a minute. All of a sudden it was do this. Now it's but only do it this much. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, my memories of all that nasty shit all came after school started, not before it. I don't have any bad, any kind of bad ideas about nothing until I was in school. And school changed everything. Ugh. The controlling, begging permission bullshit motherfuckers and their, you know, everybody's got to be the same as the next kid. And they're not. Kids are different. They might operate on the same freaking frequency or behave within these boundaries, but they're all different. They're not the same. Yeah, but that whole thing of we've got to fit them all into yeah. the same little cookie cutter mold, that's, yeah. So my rebellious side was probably brought out in the first place by the very thing that was society trying to, to put me in their little thing. And me already going, hey, wait a minute, what? No. <laughs> Because I, I I remember a little bit of kindergarten days, like two or three things will pop in memory, and it had nothing to do with learning anything. I don't think they started writing and reading shit until I was in first grade, I think six years old. But yeah. I can't be positive, but I don't, I, there's no remembering about, like sitting down with books in kindergarten, I don't remember any of that. But I know my dad taught me. Because I could read the newspaper. And, would... <laughs> and not all of it. There was a lot of big words that you know took a few years to catch. But for four years old, I could hold my own. Yeah, well. Mm. Just before I turned uh, five. Because I got a birthday in the, where they uh, 
they set you in by your birthday to the class. You know, so you're all in this age group crap. See, and I remember, well, my mom was a teacher too, so that kind of helps. But I think all of us kids knew how to read before we started school. You know, at least we knew our ABCs. We knew how to count to at least 20. We could read some words. Um, mm. But I don't really remember actually learning that kind of stuff because, you know, it was No, yeah, me play, neither. No. It was playtime yeah. for us. Oh. Know, I'm, she always had the, the letter magnets on the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she would go over in the mornings and just scramble up all of those letters, and then we would get to go over there and make words. Oh, very clever. See, we yeah. come out of that simple hands-on to it age. And people think that this computer crap is hands-on, and I don't. I That might be my missing link. Is My connection is real vague with this Internet crap. I mean, I like it, and I use it. It's amusing and all that, but... I don't know. You know, I got that something in the back of my mind just is not as comfortable with this as I was with riding a bike or swimming in a swimming pool. You know, something physical is, as opposed mm -hmm. to something. This is like reading a book. You can read what I can pick a name, Grimner, and I, it says, it takes a village, idiot. And, and then after that, it takes a bullet. And uh, I could, you know, Beetle. And I could take these things however I like. Mm -hmm. But I, why is it with some people I don't choose? I choose not to really be concerned with it. Just something they wrote, ha ha. And other people could write something, and I would just go, "Whoa, you dumbass! What is wrong with you?" <laughs> yeah, I do it all the time. Push, they push buttons. But see, but it's I. I think it's it's also good for people to have the. Uh, the guy uh, that's doing the most shit, isolate it out. Let him know, you know. doesn't hurt anyone. Hmm. See, and mm, if we would deal, I see stuff going on in the chat that I don't necessarily, I just walk away. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, but where was I going to go with that? Oh, well, it went. I had an idea in it uh, because of my marijuana addiction. It seems to have escaped. <laughs> uh -oh. There is a loose thought out there somewhere that I had. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a little flasher thought running around the cosmos. Yeah. And it's not being observed by, well, it might be observed by someone. Uh, someone might be taking it and going, I'm going to run with this. Mm. So, yeah, maybe you should be afraid. I got it. Or not. Did I ask? I don't know if I asked you this question or not. Huh. Oh, here we go. I, I know I haven't asked you this one. Are you ready for this? And I'm going to preempt it with a little a little word or two. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I personally do not have a problem with fags or dykes or people that want to fuck carrots or whatever that. That's cool. If that's what you want to be, that's cool. Go do it somewhere. What I have a problem with is... People insisting that I see them do the stuff that they do. that That's not freedom anymore. Then that's just flaunting your shit in my face. So my question yeah. to you is, this shit that we're calling entertainment today, I'm going to write it more clean. I'm going to clean it up the notes. But they call this entertainment. What do you think? How do you see this? And you know what I'm talking about, right? In particular? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I have stopped watching an awful lot of shows that otherwise, you know, I kind of sort of like the storyline or whatever on Netflix and Amazon Prime, simply because all of a sudden here comes a gratuitous sex scene and it doesn't make a shit bit of difference who is involved in it. It's like this has absolutely nothing to do with the plot line that was going along with this story. You just all of a sudden threw a couple of people in bed and now the camera is doing close-ups of places that I really don't care to see a close-up of. <laughs> and so I shut it off. <laughs> and and I see an awful lot of that. Oh. Um, 
you know, when you, when you go on the interwebs, go on Twitter, go on Facebook, go on Minds, wherever, mm. somebody's got to post that stuff. And to me, it's like, oh, my goodness, such a sad, 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 sad world where people are are equating the the physical act with some kind of um, real emotion. You know, there's, and I, oh, bless their hearts, I have some nieces Mm -hmm. that have come out of the closet, if you will. Mm. And it's like, well, we just don't want to, and we think girls are pretty, so therefore we are. And I look at them and say, no, you're not. That is, that's not the criteria for this shit. You may have been fed that nonsense, but that's not the criteria for this shit. And I think that's the problem, is they are trying to feed this certain narrative, not just to us, to get us to where we just kind of turn a blind eye to it, which I turn it off, so that's basically turning a blind eye. But it's also putting it there for the kids, and the more the kids see it, the more they start realizing, oh, well, this is just normal. No, it's not. I've had this discussion with my granddaughters and told them that's not, quote, unquote, normal. Hmm. That is what they want you to think is normal. Yeah, acceptable. Now, do I, do yeah. I care what hmm. two consenting adults do together? Hmm. No. It's their business. Hmm. But, but when they start putting it out there in front of me when I did not ask for it to be put there or in front of my children or my grandchildren when I did not ask for it to be put there, that's violence. That's abuse. And that needs to stop. That censorship and that's you're not being open-minded. You're just being an old lady. Man and Anna, do you? Yeah, it's censorship, and I'm not being open minded, and I'm being an old lady. That's so what you you're going to be hit with. Come they, on. Oh, I know, and yeah. I just tell just them. Being hey, honest. You know, you have every right to perform whatever you want to perform with a consenting adult. Yeah. That That is your business. Yeah. They kind of took the do, surprise out of it. You do not thing. have a right to invade my home with it. Sure, they do. No, they don't. Why not? Because it's my home. And? My rules. Well, who turned on the electronic shit to see it? See, I'm just being honest with what the bullshit stories are going to, how they're going to turn it on you and make you the fucker. You're the one that turned it on. Which is where, yeah, and then I promptly turned it off when Uh, I saw what was going on. All right. Because this is, and basically, I'm not saying home as in a Mm. physical dwelling. I'm saying home as in into my head Mm. and into my heart and into my beliefs. You, you're not welcome in my <laughs> home <laughs> okay. with that stuff. Mm. That's where I have boundaries, yeah. and that's the boundary that I enforce. Good luck. I think the interwebs I, would just wear you down until you're just a nub and you can't even fight back. And I get to the point where I say, if it comforts you to feel that way, but I have mm. every right and intention to ignore your uh, ass no, or wait. shut you down. You got rights. What? You're crazy. You've got no rights. You hear about the Patriot Act. I have wrongs, too. You, I have an awful lot of wrongs. Mary, didn't you ever... I have left, too. Yeah. I have a left hand, okay. a left foot. You're just going to be funny about it. I won't. <laughs> well... <laughs> this is the I mean, shit people call you know, entertainment, everybody. <laughs> Me and Mary. You know, when, people, right. when people get to where they're all so damn... But I have a right. Yes, you have every right to do that with another consenting adult. You have every right in the world. But you, you, I did not invite you into my living room to do that. Oh yeah, I I hold the same that same idea. But you got to remember, see, we're caught in a paradox, and that paradox is all right. We want it both ways. We want protection and we want freedom. This is the we, the collective. Okay, this is why yeah. it will never, ever freaking work, because you want it both ways. The right way will never work, because too many people like to lie. <laughs> well, there's too many, yeah, too many people swallowed that sweet and pleasant tasting lie instead of taking that bitter pill called truth. Yeah. And that bitter pill called truth says, guess what? Just because you want to do it doesn't mean everybody else wants to partake. Well, they call that democracy. 
majority rule bullshit. Actually, they call it sovereignty. No, they I don't. am sovereign enough to say, hmm. not in my house. <laughs> not in my house. <laughs> Luckily for you, nobody wants to live where you live, or you'd be in big no. trouble. Well, just, yeah, I just probably a, would. imagine if a developer decided that your town was going to be the next boom town. Yeah. Well, you know what? If enough people agreed with that concept, mm -hmm. then I would find somewhere else. To <laughs> See? Well, when they decided to make it uh, progress here, me and Cirque tolerated it. And things did get better after they finished what they started. And they worked through the freaking winter time and all shitty weather and they still did their damn jobs. It took a little longer because shit has harder time drying in the cold. But there's yeah. there's tricks. Like they use antifreeze in their mortar in places like this. Probably do in the States too, but I you know, yeah. I don't know. And they put blankets on and yeah. But yeah, but things are just yeah, there's so much uh, more thought through it seems in smaller places because you don't want to have to go back and fix it two months later in the city. Yeah. They, they don't care by the time it breaks. Uh, we were expecting that. Yeah. Uh, there are people are used to having potholes to dodge. Ah, uh, people are used to, that's the problem. People have gotten used to the bullshit. Why should you get used to bullshit? It's that's the too, thing to do. That. Well, that's the... Well, that, that, the bullshit comes with society. Now, again, you got to remember, that's your opinion on looking at the situation. And so yeah. few people are going to agree with you on this. That, and just don't want you to get all excited and then be let down. Well, the the big, and that's, a, you know, if they don't agree with me, that's fine. That is their choice. Hmm. I'm hmm. not going to go in their face and say... You fucking pervy bastard. You know, unless you're touching a kid. You touch a kid, dude. I'm all over you. I don't know. I've but, seen links about these uh, 10-year-olds that are they're being, well, pimped out. And they get them cross-dressing in men, men's gay clubs and shit. And I don't look for the shit. It's just there on the internet to see. I don't know if it's true or not, but it sounds California. <laughs> Why not? But... But even the thought is just messed up. Yeah, but they spent 40 years trying to make being a fag a cool thing. So, no, they got a lot invested in this. Are you kidding? This keeps the population down, keeps the population fighting amongst itself over... Oh, yeah, an, over, it is most definitely a population control thing. Yeah, but yet over another thing that in the realm of reality should not be a matter of public discussion. It's not... It's not like sexuality really matters until you make it matter. And the way you make it matter is dress up like some kind of fucking popsicle and go out and have a parade. You know? And see, those... There you go. I just... I feel bad for those people because I think, oh, my God. They don't care. Self is so, yeah, their self-esteem is so low that they have to do this in that, order no, to feel recognized and acknowledged. I don't think That's so, Mary. Sad. Mary, they're beyond self-esteem. That, that idea wouldn't even cross their mind. They're no, it so wouldn't. into self that you're not there. They're into self, but there is no self-esteem. If they had any kind of self-respect mm. or self-esteem... They wouldn't be doing that shit. And One. that is part of society's bullshit. Yeah. Everybody's swallowing the bullshit from society. <clears throat> really? Oh, but, you know, you, you need sure? to be accepting. Hmm. I don't have to accept anything hmm. if I don't want to. So you're not going to go to a gay parade and hand out popsicles? No. Why not? It's not my thing. I well, really don't care to see a bunch of men walking around and okay, looking look, G-strings. But these are the things that are being promoted under the guise of social freedoms. And yes, and I being see, acceptable. And, and I see it as a, a, a very deceitful way to control very weak-minded people. It's a soft bully tactic. Yeah, because uh, I, I don't have a, a horse in the race in the first place, but I have an opinion. Because of the internet, <clears throat> you know, I see it every day on the internet. So therefore, yeah. it's real on the internet. 
in my on the internet in my freaking town I live in. There's a variety of popsicles and weirdos here too, but it's it's not as blatant and uh, like people here don't see me trying to get your attention so you'll you know do anything. It, it's very strange. I don't even know if I can explain what I'm thinking about this particular idea. It's Sam, uh, dull. I just think people it's just so sad that people don't realize you are an individual. You don't have to do this other shit in order to be an individual. <laughs> but wow. they have been taught that in order to stand out from the herd, <laughs> be like these people. <laughs> Yeah, what? be an no. individual, just like those people over there are being yeah. individuals, like yeah. everyone else. Yeah, like Ooh. them, like that group. There you go. How do you Heard. get? How do you get lost in that and and stray so far? You don't see you're just in the same shit, just a different bit of it. It's all shit. We're yeah. all in deep, deep shit. So the idea that I came up with was to keep my inner circle small. Instead yeah. of yeah, well, the states it was too big, too much, too much interference. People, you know, a lot of activity, blah blah blah. Now I got things quieted down. I got a wife and a dog and a cat, some in laws. Mm -hmm. And I go into town and do a little trade. So peaceful. I I could never have expected to uh, get what I got. Don't even know how any of this fucking happened. Just did, but. What I would say about it is, uh, if I was in a shitty mood, then that's me. Not the life is still the same. See, that's what I had to figure out. Because yeah. I can get into a shitty mood thinking about horrible things all over the world. There's horrible things going on, and have the internet to guide me to them, so I can be upset about the horrible things going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then I can take me out of my good mood and feel like shit because. Greta doesn't like me. <laughs> or you could just focus on what's going on around you, and if it's not going well, then you see, is there something I can do to make it better? If there is, then do it. If if there is and you don't want to do it, well, then guess what? Things are going to stay the same. But I want that, Greta that to like a, me. I know. That was a really tough lesson for me to learn that, that you know, I – and it's – I'm I'm kind of sort of on the fence about it. I I think you need to know that there is crap. Oh, see you, Vinny. Have a wonderful day. Hey, Vinny. Um, there is crap going on in the world. Oh and yeah. Oh, it doesn't yeah. hurt to acknowledge that there is crap going on in the world. Some of that crap you can take to heart and you can make bring it home, and so now you have that crap at home. All of it. Or, all of it. You can bring all yeah. of it if you want to. Or you can say, there is crap out there, yeah. but I have made sure that there is no crap in here. No, that's kind of overextending the abilities just a tad, I would say. Because, and just because of this one little idea, there are things in my uh, memory banks okay, about stuff that uh -huh. was based on a lie that uh -huh. I have yet, have yet to get to. They're still there. I just don't know what they are at this moment. I can't identify them that way. But there's a lot, you know, because there's so much bullshit that I've been taught in life over the course of 60 years that to get to the truth about everything, I, I don't see that ever happening. But some of the see, bigger things I, I have. And they're usually all about me, 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 me. <laughs> Well, it all is. I mean, everything is about me, 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 because we're the ones that are interpreting it. But, you know, some of those bad things, they stay in the back of your mind until you find something that resolves them. And once you get them resolved, then they pretty much go away well, or they get like filed what? away in context. Oh, OK. Filed away. Yeah. But I'm saying that, that I'm sure I've got memories of stuff that I just, I've just haven't even got to it yet. Yeah. That's everybody that's, does. Right. Well, I'm aware of my my uh, shortcomings. I would say, you know, my abilities. I'm not Superman. 
I know you think I am and everything, but no, Mary. Yeah, but that's just because you have that cape. I'm as mindless as Hansel. I am as uh, obnoxious as Vinny. And in some ways, I'm as isolated as uh, Rob works, you know. But it's all, it's weird how my, my thing balances, no matter what I think it is. It's what I think it is and what other people think it is don't seem to really matter. It's what you physically do. <laughs> and the rest of it, talk is cheap. You know, you can say this, and I own that, and I'm a this, and I've got a PhD, and my wiener is so big, you couldn't, you know, would blind you to see it, and all that kind of crap guys you know, would kind of go off and do. And it's amusing for a minute, but you would think at the age we're at, we would have got beyond it. And unfortunately, we're still, some of us, I try not to on purpose. I'm sure I do it, but I don't think I'm completely aware of my control when I'm being controlling. And when I am, I am. If I'm angry at the time, then I know. Like yesterday, I was pissed off as fuck at Vinny because he wouldn't listen. He was only in the talk mode. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, I just shut up. Okay. You know, you won't let me respond because I like to even just throw in a few words just to finish an idea that you're having because I see a part of it you're overlooking. And that people call it interrupting, and it is, but uh, Vinny don't allow it. You don't allow it either, but I do it anyway because I like you. Uh, yeah, well, you know, and I find it amusing whenever you interrupt. I know. And, and I'm really getting to the point where I enjoy interrupting you as well. <laughs> I know. See, it's, that might be what evolution truly is, is when you change your behavior and your outlook on social crap that today it annoys me and the next two weeks later you've thought it through. And, uh, that's not even, that's so pointless to even think about it. What was I thinking? And it's a personal responsibility thing. You get to it. You know, because some, some people like to argue on the RLM chat. You might find that hard to believe. I do. Yeah. I do I do. We I have had, do. we have in the past had gentlemen, it just seems to me, my opinion about it, is he kind of stocks this woman that's on RLM. And he's got this thing, he knows how to irritate her. And once it starts, that's it, it's on. And it's not, hmm, it's not one of those things that could be ignored because one of the players is an admin. So it's kind of abusive in my opinion, but freedom of speech is being yep. protected because manners are being ignored. There you go. People can't always account for their behavior, you know, and see that what they're doing is rude and fucked up and insensitive to somebody else like me and Hans don't treat each other worth the shit, but I don't trust him to be my friend. So I'd rather get along that way, but that's me. And I'm open. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I trust a man as far as I can throw the house. And that's the way that I am. So there you go. There you go. Yam what yam. You got what you paid for. You should have should have paid cash. Oh yeah. yeah. One last thing. You got. Uh, we got a few minutes left. You want to rant about the uh, imaginary freaking mess we're in with all these trillions of fucking dollars in fiat currency out there? That these idiots are still trading to this moment? Yeah, I saw something about $23 trillion in debt. <laughs> to who? <laughs> to who? <laughs> Me. If, oh, if RealLibertyMedia.com. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Apparently the whole world is in $55 trillion worth of debt. Now there's how many countries in the world? Hundred some? Hundred some countries in the world, and yet <laughs> I thought there we was two hundred and twelve have... countries. On... Well, I'll do a Google search okay. thing. What? See what okay. Okay. Well, still, the world is in fifty-five trillion dollars worth of debt. Last I saw, and yet the United States is in twenty-three trillion. I'm thinking it's time the United States quits saying drinks for everyone, around for the house. I think the United States needs to quit doing that shit because. Because this stuff of, of everybody drinking on on uh, 
one person's dime. Eventually, that one person's dime, you can only squeeze it so much before there ain't nothing left. And, you know, then that's pretty much the definition of fiat or fake currency because it's not real. They're saying, I'll pick up the tab. But really, do they? Obviously not because we're still $23 trillion in debt. To who, might you ask? I have no freaking clue. But until someone comes up and shows me the goddamn IOU that says, you are responsible for your share of this $23 trillion, and I'm here to collect, okay? Do I actually owe it to you? Show me the paperwork that shows that I actually borrowed that amount of this Monopoly money from you, and then I'll think about it. Because did I actually knowingly agree to this? Did I make a conscious decision to say, sure, I'll be responsible for my share of that $23 trillion? I don't think so. <laughs> I, did, I was not given proper information. I was not given all of the facts. Therefore, I could not make a totally informed consent. Therefore, I am not responsible. Take your IOU and use it for butt wipe. That's my thing. <laughs> That's where I'm at, at least. Okay. And uh, Slim Flim has a question for us on the reallibertymedia.com. And I'm going to read it to you. Ready? He says, Graham Z, slash somebody, after this topic, what do you think about the USA buying Greenland? <laughs> you know that that is such a funny it's such an off the wall kind of remark to make and the more I started looking into that and I'm not saying it's true or not but that was supposedly code for calling out the the monetary system uh, how do you mean I have I have no well you know Greenland I'm in the green mm. I got lots of cabbage Greenland itself, how do you, how do you, um, it's like a video I saw earlier today, and I don't know if it was a put up or what, but some guy, apparently, you never really saw the full uniform, all you saw was the hands, um, some guy was sitting in a car, and another guy whose hands you could see was saying, sir, you need to get out of the car, and he said, no, I discovered this car, and then the camera turns, and you see another guy holding a bottle of water, and he says, but that's my car. I just stopped in the driveway long enough to run in, grab me a bottle of water, and then I'm coming back out, and I was going to go, didn't even bother shutting the car off. And this other guy sitting in the car says, ah, but you see, I was walking along. I have somewhere to go. I wanted to get there quickly. I saw the car running. So I got in, and it is running, and I can drive. I have discovered this. That's what Columbus did. There were people here before he got here, but he discovered it, So, and he claimed it. So, yeah, there the was West someone Indies. in here driving this car before I got into it, wait, and wait, they wait, parked wait. it, and they left the keys in, they left it running, and I walked along, and I was able to get into it, so I discovered it. It is now mine. Well, it depends on what history book you read, because I've read well, that uh, Colombo never made it to America. He only made it to the West Indies. And when he was yes, there but, visiting the West Indies, he left a wake of death and and he stole what wasn't bolted down to take home. Yeah, he brought he brought dis-ease with him. Oh, but he too, still yeah. discovered it because, hey, look, mm -hmm. there, there might be people here, but they don't know that they're here. <laughs> it's a contract. I discovered it. This yeah. is mine now, it's... and it's mine to do as I will, and I'm going to make all these people sick because that's what I will do. Mm. It's, it, you know, that – and. Same thing with Greenland. Really? Seriously? Buy Greenland? Uh, yeah. That's, that's a put out kind of thing just to get people. And Trump will still skin. God bless his heart. He ran with it. And he had fun with it. And guess what? The mainstream media ran with it. Did they? And got all butt hurt over it. How? He's going to buy Greenland. How? Ah! How? Nobody ever stopped to think about how, how? or why. Do you have any idea why? what Does Greenland well, even want to be bought? What or the price of it would be? I mean, yeah, 
It's wow. it's mm, it was a nonsensical thing. No, it wasn't. No, 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 stage no, no. Show no, it wasn't to nonsensical. Get everybody diverted on something. No, it wasn't nonsensical because it pissed off the Danes I know. Some of them down at the bar were like, "Who the fuck does he think he is?" Yeah. Wow. And why do you think it was done like that? It was done like that to, to get, get that response. Yeah, that's what it did. That's what but I'm it reporting makes absolutely to you. No sense to a logical mind. It makes absolutely no sense unless you know the ulterior motives behind it. There are no it's ulterior like, motives behind owning land. Is a freaking fantasy we all share. Just yeah. write something on paper and tell everybody it's the truth, and they just go along. They don't know any fucking different. I'm not in Chile right now. I'm not in Venezuela. I can only know about those places what you tell me. Otherwise, I'm blind. Yeah. So just like every place else. And I posted a thing. It says there are 195 countries on the planet at this time. 195. Okay. So. I think. 55 trillion in debt is what the world supposedly is. Or that that's an old figure. That's from last year. And the United States debt is now 23 trillion. So we have 23 trillion of it. And the other hundred and ninety some countries have the other twenty two trillion. The hell! They need to pick up the slack. They need to carry their own share of the load. Either that, or throw the freaking monopoly money away, because that's pretty much what it is. Wow. Well, see, this, it's just the, see, it's and that's collapsed. just the way I see it. I see it as it's just absolutely madness. Well, no, it's a pyram- twenty three trillion. It's a pyramid scheme, and it's collapsing again and every time it does they find some way to prop it back up and carry it down the road a little further it's a bogus con we're we're just being lied to it call it what you like yeah. call it government call it religion call it society what it's a joint bend over the table and take one for the team this is what we do because we're idiots you know i seen a meme the other day about California that kind of hurt my feelings because I'm from California and I grew up driving cars. So deep down inside, I'm a car driver and I seen the thing and it says, yeah, well, we got you all to switch to electric cars and then we shut the power off. And I, and I went, wow. Yeah. <laughs> rolling, rolling blackouts from PG and E because you know their equipment may or may not work or some, whatever their excuse is. That. Yeah. Who knows what that yeah. is. That's all in the press anyway. Everybody's got their opinion. But I'm from that place, and somehow that just said, like, wow, I escaped another fucking hell somehow. How did I make – how do I do this? Yeah, and all of those wonderful little electric car drivers. Ah. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Yeah. And they, not a one of them actually stops to consider – that it takes con- petroleum products right. to generate that electricity. Nothing that because we do can't the way be replaced with designed. Hemp. Ah, hemp. True, we could do, but cur- the current system is designed to where everything feeds off of the petroleum industry. Yeah, I agree with you completely on that, little Missy. Damn, I was hoping to argue. Well, anyway, sorry, we're down to the last of the dorky table here. Missy? Yeah. Do you want and to be... Frumpy boy keeps popping in and out. We'll get some nails and nail them down or something. Anyway, you uh, got anything particularly wise to end the show with today? Or funny? Particularly wise or funny? Not really, mm-hmm. because I got a a uh, essential oils class this afternoon. As soon really? As we get done here. You're yep. giving or you're taking? I am taking. Apparently, mm. they're... About thirty miles from here, that's ah, where I gotta go. But, okay, but, that's um, a little snap. You'll be there in two minutes. Oh yeah, mm. well not two minutes, but I'll be there in about a half hour. Okay. It doesn't start till two o'clock my time, so I got an hour yet. But oh. yeah, that's that's really the only thing I got going on. You know, got that essential oils class, and then I'm gonna go and buy some bananas because I'm out of bananas. And you know us monkeys, we need bananas. Out so. of bananas? Oh no. I know. In Kansas, cannot. you cannot be out without bananas. What are you? Nuts? We cannot be without bananas. <laughs> Can you imagine? My 
bunny rabbit likes her bananas. Yeah, but I live in Denmark and we got bananas. And you know you what they bananas? don't? You know what they don't grow in, in Denmark? What bananas? Oh man! I'm you you got to import them. You, you think? Are, you are being held over the barrel by the banana futures market. Exactly. One more <laughs> time. Everybody's got their finger in some hole of mine, and I'm starting to complain. Take the you, fingers you, out of me. Uh. You're starting to chafe. Uh, I'm going to poop. <laughs> no, you just, essential nah, you just think you're going to poop. I'm going to poop. <laughs> nah, you just think so. And the proctologist is born. This is our superhero. Yeah, me, and, well, me and Cirque dreamed about The proctologist is going to block that point. He, nah, he's a superhero. He protects assholes. He's been servicing ah. assholes for since he was thought of. <laughs> the proctologist. And what a hell of a way to end the dork table, huh? <laughs> yeah, with the proctologist. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the same as the banking, isn't it? Yes. This is what you don't wow. want to do. I, 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 can you believe people live that way? You know, when you go to the proctologist... Yeah. And they have their hand on your shoulder. Oh. And then they take their other hand and go, and how are you doing? And pat your other shoulder. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I I tried to, yeah. See, I try to avoid all that touchy-feely shit with strangers in the first fucking place. And, I, <laughs> and I've, I've accomplished it by just not cutting my hair. Oh, there you go. Most... People do not want to hug me if I'm walking towards them. <laughs> hmm. I'm not a warm and loving guy walking up to you in a group. <laughs> and perhaps that's why that couple was so astonished when the doggy didn't go grr. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Grimner, cool. I sent Grim our Look, notes. Oh, and I see... I see SLC Mike is here. Howdy, Yay, Mike. Mike. Yeah, I know how. Okay. But That's it, though. That's, are, I'm done. Are you done. finished for the day? Okay. I am I am fini for ah, the day. You have many things to go do. Okay. Yes, I do. Well, then, be a good girl and be off with you, then. Go, go. What are you yes. doing here now? Go do your responsibility. <laughs> off with you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for... Uh, Joining me here today on the Dork Table. And me and Vinny are doing the Tuesday at uh, 1 o'clock on the East Coast. So if you're around and you want to jump in there and bitch and moan at me and Vinny, you're welcome to it. Tuesday night, my time. Tuesday night. Well, Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, I know I am your going, time. I'm going to be seeing my mom on Tuesday. Oh, I already know that. Say hey to moms for us. Yep. Okay. Yes. Goodbye, everybody. So. Hasta la taco, muchachos.